evening to one and all here i am dr prerna sharma coordinator of bmmc of palais college of arts commerce and science on behalf of mahatma education society palais college of arts commerce and science i welcome our eminent resource person mr hussein as zaidi our chairperson of management board of mahatma education society and co-founder of pelai group of institutions dr dafni pelai uh, our principal uh, dr gijanan vardar our vice principal mrs dipika sharma the organizing team my colleagues and dear participants for today's webinar on basic principles of creative writing this webinar is the part of the golden series to mark the 50th year of mahatma education society outshine your peers by sharpening your creative writing skills creative writing is not something that only arts majors and people in writing career needs the ability to write well and to communicate effectively is very important to be successful in whatever domain you belong to writing in no is no longer a skill but a basic requirement of this society in terms of communication these days this could range from a, from work mails to casual text based conversations writing helps you to connect and imagine the digital era has accelerated the need to write an impressive write a write up can fetch your customers if you are a brand or a business if you uh, it can also fetch up your readers if you are a writer it can also impress your boss and customers if you manage to write your emails well for that very reason if even each and every good movie or a digital content starts with someone penning down the idea so that people can buy it i would like to bring to your notice several instructions that would be uh, related to the session the first one is that the audience are requested to pose the questions related to the session at the end in the chat box which will be answered for them secondly there will be a feedback link which will be shared in the comment box at the end of the session after the vote of thanks and this link will be activated only for 20 minutes so all the participants are requested to fill up the link when it is shared and they will be able to avail the e certificate on that time itself it's my honor to welcome our chairperson of management board of mahatma education society and co-founder of pelai group of institutions dr daphne pelai ma'am is the founder patron of mahatma education society research forum which gives us a platform to bud to budding researchers to present their work to accomplished academicians and solicit feedback she is the founder president of soroptimist international bombay chamber which is affiliated to the soroptimist international of great britain and ireland ma'am has also been elected as a president of international women's federation of commerce and industry india chapter a global organization dedicated to helping women entrepreneurs growing globally she has been felicitated for her contributions to education and especially for her efforts to empower the underprivileged women in the society through adult literacy drive and skill development programs she was also a recipient of aso champ 
the women achievement award of the year at women's leadership and empowerment summit held in new delhi and the award was conferred on her by the honorable union minister of women and child development uh, shrimati smriti uh, zubin irani ma'am was also awarded the savi honors celebrating success award organized by the savi magazine i request you ma'am to please address the audience thank you over to you ma'am as part of mark my education society's golden jubilee talk series we are very fortunate to get an eminent journalist for this webinar on creative writing s hussein zaidi is a well known name in literary circles for his narratives on the underworld black friday dongri to dubai mafia queens of mumbai mumbai avengers and others this is indeed a wonderful way to mark the golden jubilee year of mahatma education society which runs the pillay group of institutions which are 48 in number and which runs pre primary to post graduate programs we have colleges of architecture engineering management studies international schools polytechnics teacher training institutes in colleges of arts science and commerce research institutes and others coming back to today's webinar i remember doing a short time course on creative writing which was conducted by viet the british institute of english teaching we don't hear of that institute today probably they just changed the name or maybe the company just folded up it was a correspondence course and i remember receiving course materials in the mail though i loved creative writing my writing was limited to writing a short story competition in a mumbai magazine i think it was the eves weekly in those years and of course for 17 years i was the editor of hinduja's horizons the annual magazine of hinduja college today i feel youngsters are very fortunate to be able to get a degree in mass media from mumbai university in our times you either had a flair for writing or not there used to be a certificate and part time diploma courses in journalism and mass media but those were only post graduate programs today the world of journalism and the media is such an exciting one there are so many journalistic opportunities to explore i think investigative journalism is the most difficult of all as it calls for danger and risk to the life of the journalist for it involves collecting and evaluating evidence to expose a criminal conspiracy or a scam but it is a most appealing and interesting story to the reader audience we just flip over pages and pages of newspaper and stop at an interesting report and more often than not it is a piece of investigative journalism coming to creative writing i do understand that one must have a flair for writing but it is also important to understand the craft and skill which goes with it unlike journalist writing which calls for facts and figures creative writing allows you to use your imagination and ideas to concoct a story which will appeal to the reader audience you need to have a plot characters and other elements in creative writing i will leave that to the expert to give you guidance and guidelines on creative writing and i thank principal gajanan wader professor deepika sharma and professor prerna sharma for organizing this event and to our special guest s huzaini zaidi for agreeing to share his inputs on creative writing skill to our students a big thank you to you sir over to you prerna thank you so much ma'am for your kind words uh, it's my privilege 
to introduce our eminent resource uh, person, Mr. Zub Hussain El Zaidi. Sir is a writer, mentor, producer, script writer, and a publisher. He was an investigative journalist for 20 years. His first book, Black Friday, published by Penguin, was made into a critically acclaimed film yes. by director Anurag Kashyap. His documentation of the Mumbai Mafia in the books like Dongri to Dubai, Mafia Queens of Mumbai, My Name is Abu Salim, and Baikala to Bangkok is considered one of the finest pieces of investigative journalism. Two of his books, Dongri to Dubai and Class of 83, are under production for the series on Amazon Prime Video and Netflix original respectively. I welcome you, sir, and request you to kindly share your expertise with the audience. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Hello, guys. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity of interacting with you guys today via this uh, online medium. I was wondering whether this lockdown and this extended confinement will even allow us to uh, talk, communicate, or even be able to exchange ideas. Anyway, this. My camera is on, isn't it? My camera is on. Yes, sir, it's on. Yeah, it's on because somebody sent me a message saying that switch on your camera. So uh, I'm supposed to discuss the basic principles of creative writing. Honestly speaking, creative writing is quite a vast subject and uh, it will be difficult to encapsulate the whole principle, the credo of creative writing in this small conversation. But I shall try and the whole science, the whole craft and the art of writing in this half an hour discussion. And I'll try to broadly uh, dwell on four or five basic principles, which if you can hold on to, then you can become a good writer. And I'm saying this with utmost responsibility that for being a writer, you just need to be careful with four or five principles in your life. And after that, nobody can stop you from becoming a successful writer. How I can say this with so much confidence? Because I have not gone to any creative college, creative writing courses. I have not gone and uh, taken some degrees or any kind of you know, certified expertise on creative writing. But your devotion, your dedication, your interest can ensure that you can become a writer. It's like, I'll give you an example from our Indian uh, mythology. Arjuna had a teacher. Eklavya had none, but Eklavya still became a better archer than Arjuna. So in our life, if we are dedicated and devoted to our art, it's quite possible that we can excel much more than those who have got trained expertise and people who have been giving them instructions to excel in that particular field. So now what I'm trying to tell you is that you should be different from others. Creative writing sometimes can be prolific. It can be quite boring. Why this may happen? Because we all are bogged down with the principle of writing. How to tell a story. And this principle itself is something which will stun your writing abilities. Please understand that writing is a skill. And any skill that you have to develop, you need to practice. You need to hone your yourself. You need to ensure that you train yourself regularly so that you can master the skill. But if you don't pay attention to your craft, if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, your skill might get rusted and you might have a trouble in doing it well. So for that, you need to keep doing this every day. You need to keep practicing it. Even if you have to write, say, 500 words a day, or even if you have to ensure that you are writing, say, 
not just writing but even speaking and trying to articulate your thoughts and your ideas this will ensure that you become good in your skill in your practice but the first principle is that don't try to tell a story most of the writers fail in their exercise when they try to tell a story and when they use lot of words they use lot of expressions they try to be very good with grammar they try to use big huge words and think that if they are using big words maybe they can be considered a better writer don't do that please it's a trap and this trap will not allow you to move further the basic funda of a story and for a successful writer is to show the story try to show them try to ensure that you write your stories in such a manner that the reader should not think or he is lulled into believing that he is watching the scene he has become the part of the scene just by being there now you guys know that today there is there are so many technologies like vc camera and all those things which ensure that you are there in the scene just by putting those lenses on your eyes so you have to employ the same skill here and ensure that you give such a fantastic description of the scene that your reader need not have to strain to think you are already dominating his imagination how do you dominate an imagination how do you show the story and how you not tell the story by first being a part of that scene yourself for example if you have to be into a battlefield and you are writing a story about where you have to be picturizing or where you have to be depicting a scene between fight between two warriors so what you have to do is that you have to ensure that you be you are like standing right in the middle of that battlefield there is so much of bloodshed happening there is so much of gore being spilled there are warriors who are attacking and assaulting each other with absolute ferocity and fury and you are seeing this with your own eyes you are seeing the craziness you are seeing the whole madness that's happening in front of you in the battlefield now your job is to describe that frenzy that madness that blood thirsty netness of those warriors in your words and i'm telling you now that if at all you guys can manage to do this because you have got the scene right you need to write it easy and again as i said that uh, i'm a bit shy of giving personal examples but i know how others do it in black friday if you will see there have been so many such scenes where you will feel as if things are happening in front of you and this is not any laurel or any credit to myself honestly speaking when i was talking to these guys who were accused in bombas accused and i was in bombas case and when i was meeting them in the arthur road uh, prison and i was interviewing them separately they used to describe their whole incident the whole story the conspiracy their preparation in such a way i felt as if i'm seeing everything with my own eyes black friday was my first book but because i had gathered so much information i had made so much of copious notes and abundant of documents and paperwork and so much that when i sat down to sat down to write the whole story i found it was very easy first of all i was having a huge complex of writing at that time because for me that was the first book i was as my penguin to write the book i was only 2 years or 3 years in journalism in 1997 i was given the contract for writing black friday someone who only 3 years into journalism is going to write about an incident which at that time was considered to be the biggest terrorist act in the world 911 happened much later march 12 1993 remained the biggest terrorist act of the world at that time i was finding it the task to be too much to be able to tell the story but as i said that the imagination the whole idea of trying to get the scenes right so when i i consulted my my guru my mentor mr vikram chandra and i am sure you guys know who vikram chandra is he made it very simple he gave me two uh, main principles two main advices which i'll share with you right now 
and ensure that you can also follow those two principles in your own right take expeditions. The first thing he told me was that don't think that you are going to get the scene or the story accurate or exact in the very first attempt. It's quite possible that you might have to make several attempts. You might have to write it again and again. But what you should do is that you should vomit the whole detail, the whole story that you have on your page. And once you might see that whatever gibberish or impositive that you have, just try to improve on that. So that was the first thing that you should write whatever you have and then keep giving structure and keep trying to improve on it, improve the language, expressions, try to make it better, try to be more art articulate next time. You know, Vikram Chandra, whose wife Melanie is also, Melanie Abrams is a huge writer in the US and she has done so many books. Melanie says that sometimes her books undergo 22 drafts before she submits her manuscript. 22? Imagine a book which is a minimum of 75,000 words is being worked upon 22 times. Look at the amount of work. But then, as I said, that the result is always sweeter. It always makes it worthwhile. Her books, all of her books, are bestsellers in US. It's because she is paying so much attention to the writing, rewriting, reworking, editing details. So first thing is that try to write and don't bother whether you're not getting it right or it's not exact and you need to improve on it first. Second thing, don't try to look at the book as a huge and humongous task. Don't think, oh, it's huge, it's colossal. How will I write about this? This part itself will crush you down. You have to ensure that you take it casually, you take it easily. Vikram gave me the example that the way I write 25 articles in my newspaper. So for example, if one article is about 1,000 words or 2,000 words, and if I take, say, writing those 25 articles in my newspaper, I was working in Indian Express at that time. So if I take about, say, three months or six months of time writing those 25 or 30 articles, that I should treat this book as a collection of those 25 or 30 articles. So target writing one article a week. It's like writing 2,000 or 3,000 word article or a piece or a chapter, whatever way you want to look at it, every week. And you will realize that in three months time or six months time, you have collected quite a data, quite an information on that book. Now. I know that uh, I have limited time and I have to say a lot of things here, but just for those guys, because here writing are now divided into two basic genres. Main genre is nonfiction and the other genre is fiction. Those who want to write and they want to write for digital medium or they want to write for Hollywood and they want to write for cinema or other such medium where they want their writing should be recognized on celluloid, I would heavily recommend that you should really be focusing on non-fiction. Why? Because non-fiction is something which people are crazy about. They want to read the real story. I have said enough things about it in my uh, YouTube videos. And those who have been following the videos, they know that how I keep recommending about non-fiction stories. So that maybe I'll get into those details later. But those who want to write, I will tell them that they should first focus and target on non-fiction stories. And when you guys are working on nonfiction, you yourself will realize the satisfaction, the happiness that you get when you achieve, when you manage to figure out a, a story, an incident in your own world, the way you can get the graphic details and the way you have a narrative fixed in your own world, in your own mind. So as I said, we can come to nonfiction later. Let's talk about the fiction story writing here because a lot of people feel that the freedom the liberty that they get out of writing fiction stories is something which cannot be matched by writing non-fiction. Because non-fiction, I mean, I agree, has certain limitations, has certain constraints. You'll have to have documents, you have to have paperwork, you need to be very thorough, your interviews have to be correct, you can't be making, making simple mistakes of dates, words, comma, punctuation, because it's quite possible that this might land you in trouble. There might be defamation cases against you. The court might haul you off for misrepresentation. So it's important that you focus yourself on 
uh, fiction stories. It's easier. Maybe those who guys want to make their soft debut first and they don't want to stir honest nest, it's important for them that they start with fiction writing. Now again, as I said that writing uh, might look like uh, authoring a novel or writing a story and sometimes people just think that, oh, I have a story in my head and I should just bring it out. Don't do that. Because for every, every science, for every art, there is a method. I mean, you all know that there is also a method in madness. So you can't, you are not even allowed to be mad without a method. Try to ensure that you follow certain basic funders so that the end product, the result that you get is something which people will look at and say, wow. I mean, no, that J.K. Rowling, she was pregnant. She was ditched by her boyfriend and she did not even have a computer at home. This girl went to a cafe and she started writing that book and we all know that how Harry Potter is such an amazing book. There are so many such examples. If, if I start giving you those examples, uh, we can finish the story only in all those anecdotes and episodes of those people. But my point is that for writing in fiction, if you have certain principles in your mind and if you follow those principles, you can still have a fantastic bestseller. My protege, Bilal Siddiqui wrote his first book when he was only 18 years old, Bard of Blood. Now you know that's a fantastic series on Netflix right now. While writing the book, Bard of Blood, when we made that proposal, because I am also in my imprint, Blue Salt with Penguin. So when we made the proposal to Penguin, they said, oh, uh, the plot seems to be uh, too complex. Will Bilal Siddiqui be able to do this? So they thought maybe I'm ghostwriting through Bilal. I said, no, I mean, uh, the boy can handle it. So, okay, do one thing. Let him write half the book first, and only then I'll be sure that he can do this. Because Bardo Blood is about a raw operative going to Pakistan, rescuing those four agents, and then coming back to India, and after that, foiling a major terror attack on the country. So, well, uh, he wrote half the book, and the, after that, the editor and publisher at Penguin did not have any option but to publish the book. The whole funda is that he followed those three, four principles, which I'm going to discuss quickly right now in front of you. The first thing is you should have your characters because people may forget stories. People may forget incidents. People may forget the twists and turns that will happen in your story. But what they will not forget is the character. Tell me, don't we remember Amitabh Bachchan from Shole? Even foreigners who can't speak Hindi, even they remember Amitabh Bachchan from Shole. Those guys who have seen my interviews about my kidnap in Iraq, they know that how those Iraqis who can't even pronounce the name of the superstar, and they used to call him Amisha Bakkan, always remembered him well. Like when I went to a country, uh, I saw that they were playing Amitabh Bachchan movie with Amisha Bakkan titles. They can't pronounce his name, but the character of Amitabh Bachchan has mesmerized these people in such a way that they can't forget him. So create a character, a memorable character that you can, cannot forget. Now you guys know that the book, Amish book on Shiva trilogy, why it is such a fantastic thing, why people are liking it, because of the character. The character of Shiva that he has created, what he has done is that all those Marvel superheroes, he has localized them. He has come and he has made Shiva actually a gypsy here and he has presented that guy. And people are now totally looking at that character and in awe of that character. It's the character which will be imprinted and ingrained in the mind of your readers. And that is your first victory. Make the character Maverick. Make him something where the man has such qualities or traits where you cannot forget the character, where you will not be able to get over that person. Maybe you'll be able to see a character in your dreams. Maybe you can think about him when you are walking, watching, doing other things. So first thing, create a character. So in our language, in our terminology, we call that character protagonist. So have a main central character of protagonist and then make an antagonist, someone who is inimical to this character, someone who wants to be really against him, someone who wants to use all his mind, someone who wants to use all his strength to bring him down. 
So this fight between protagonist and antagonist will be your story. Now this could be anyone. We all know that we have seen enough love stories where our poor lover boy is a protagonist and sometimes, I'm just trying to give an example, sometimes father of the girl is the antagonist. He's so inimical. You know, Dil wale dulaniya liye jayenge. Poor guy, Amrish Puri doing nothing. He's not a guy who's a gangster or a smuggler. He's a killer. He's only father of this girl who Shah Rukh Khan is trying to woo. But he's the antagonist. They both are struggling throughout the movie to ensure that Shah Rukh can get the girl and this antagonist can oppose that. So this antagonist could be anyone. He need not be a gangster, smuggler, bad guy, but he is opposed to a protagonist. So this is the first principle, have character, protagonist and antagonist. Now, in my experience, love stories work. If you have a woman character, those stories somehow are more appreciated and liked by the readers than the character which have male character, which have, which have male protagonist. So since, I mean, I don't know, all of you are not driven by the women oriented stories and they are not thinking that the, the main character should be a woman. So what they should do is they should have a, a love interest for the hero, someone who could be uh, where the hero is in love with this woman and where he's doing a lot of things for love. We all know that how there are so many stories which have worked only because love was in, in the background. An example is Titanic. What is Titanic? Titanic was a story where a ship is sinking, where a ship will sink, where the ship has sunk. This is the story of Titanic. But what made it work? It made it work a couple who were in love and they both, <coughs> love, sorry, they both, their love and the way this ordinary guy is trying to woo this high class heroine, this girl is the story which people have liked, appreciated. The whole story of Titanic is now in the background. So try to get a love interest, try to get a woman. It's a different thing that if your central character is a woman, believe me, you will get more readership here. So you have to ensure that you get a woman as a mental character if you want more page views, if you want to see that more people are reading your story and there are more people who are interested in your story. So, for example, again, I will tell you that this was my experience. I wrote Black Friday and I wrote so many other stories where there were male gangsters. By chance, absolutely by accident, there was no plan, there was no design, there was no uh, grand idea. I happened to finish the story, Mafia Queens of Mumbai. It was like lying in my uh, backyard, in my, in the, you know, deep recesses of my computers and it was never thought to be a book. But I kind of started addressing that subject where what we wrote about women in crime. You will not believe that people have forgotten so many books of mine, but they could not forget Mafia Queens of Mumbai because the central character in those stories was women. So if you guys can think, if you can create, if you can come up with a character who is a woman, you will find that your stories will be read by more people. I'll give an example. Sydney Sheldon, the guy's secret of success is a central woman character. He started off with a male character and then he moved on to a stories about female characters. And then you will realize that he became quite successful in those characters. People still remember all those women that he wrote about in his books. In fact, most of his books became immemorable because of the woman character, woman central character. So maybe uh, if you uh, want to use all those devices, which will ensure that your book is picked up by more people, then women character is something you should be doing. Now, I will tell you about three other things. Uh, quickly, I see my time is running out. Once when you have created your characters and you have created the anti-character, the anti-hero and you have your women and you know now that you know how your story is going to progress or what is exactly the story that you have in mind, do two things. Create a conflict in your story. A story which is simple, bland and it is just going in one direction is something which people will not enjoy reading. Your story should have conflict. The story should have ups and downs. 
your story should have a problem when your hero is not getting what he wants it could be a rags to riches story where a guy is facing so much of trouble imagine if bill gates was a man who had just kind of tried to become successful and he became successful would you have been interested in reading his story no we are interested because we are seeing so much of struggle for example our own lo local hero dhiru bhai mani he became big because of his rags to riches story we all want to read dhiru bhai mani story but tell me how you will want to read stories of his sons because these guys have not faced struggle to become big while dhiru bhai mani became big by his struggle we are interested in stories with conflicts we are interested in stories having struggles while someone has to really work hard and go beyond his means to achieve what he has set out to do conflict so when you are having a story conflict in the story your story is much liked by everyone and if the story is straight simple bland i don't know i mean there is also factor called luck so your books can work on luck factor as well but those who don't believe in luck or where luck factor is not working then hard work then first perspiration is something where you can work so conflict and once when you have developed your conflict and half of your book is then the conflict the problem is that then the readers after a while they will get used to the conflict the way when you are introducing all those antibiotics and all those painkillers so they get used to those uh, problem that you are facing in your body the readers will also know acha okay theek hai the, the hero is having this problem and the conflicts are happening don't let your readers feel that okay this is what the story is and now we have reached a plateau no if you really want your readers to be glued and interested and hooked to your story and reading you need to raise the bar so then what you need to do you need to add more conflict in it make it more difficult and sure that suddenly the level of trouble and the problem that your guy is facing or the story the trouble that you having in your story has suddenly now became gone to a totally different level which is not manageable for your uh, protagonist which is not manageable even the protagonist getting help from the one he loves his friends his cronies whoever he is totally at sea he is finding it so difficult we have seen all that in our marvel stories for example we all have seen the recent uh, stories of uh, infinity war and thanos and end game what they did marvel guys simply took the conflict to the next level even our superheroes look like very small people who can't even face one hero so 20 of them put together cannot fight one guy because that one guy was so powerful what they did they raised the conflict they ensure that the heroes or the protagonist cannot handle that so this as i said will vary from story to story maybe a people who are those who are writing about love stories might have to write about say another woman coming in between and claiming that she was married to the hero maybe this hero this one who has come in the life of hero will kill his girlfriend maybe there could be so many things that will happen and it's up to you that how you can come up with conflict so after you have increased the conflict then it's time that now your readers are tired don't write tomes in this world of today we are interested in shorter quicker stories people don't read now 600 700 pages books anymore there were times when they were reading say gulshan nanda 500 pages i mean i even read gulshan nanda there were times people were reading such fantastic fat books but now things are changing i mean there was a time when people were watching 3 and 1/2 hour ka movie in cinemas where it had two intervals now we want to finish a movie in 2 hours we don't want to watch a movie which is beyond 2 hours so the time is changing try to write a quick fast paced story which will finish say in 200 pages and such stories are more acceptable more popular for example even you uh, know that when in whatsapp you see there's a video of 20 minutes you are reluctant to watch that video of 20 minutes but when there is a video of 2 minutes 3 minutes 1 minute you are very interested in watching that video why it's shorter you don't have to pay a longer uh, attention span to this so write a story a book which is of 200 250 words a story which is very fast paced which will quickly head towards resolution and which will ensure that the readers are feeling satisfied at the end you have have to bring out a cathartic effect in the end your readers have to feel happy about it your readers have to feel satisfied the story what they are, are 
reading, what they're hearing. So ensure that if at all they have picked up a story while they were on their way to catching a flight and they were waiting on the airport or when they were in the flight, they managed to finish the book or at least half the book, this will serve the purpose. But ensure that you answer all your questions in the end. Don't leave any loose ends because if you have left any loose ends, it is quite possible that your story might suffer. It is quite possible that you may not be able to get more readers or the readers will come back to you again because you have left certain things. So ensure that when you come towards climactic chapters, you keep answering all the queries and all the loose ends that you have created in the middle for the readers to uh, be reading. Now, it's quite possible that your story may not be able to hold the whole plot. So you need to create small subplots. Now, these are the subplots which will be having loose ends. So this subplots are there for two reasons. One, to get the reader out from the particular situation and get to a different one, maybe for the sake of humor, maybe for the sake of uh, other interesting aspects, maybe more intrigue, or maybe to heightening the suspense. For example, in Who Derek, what we do, we bring so many other characters which we only want to make usual suspects. So we do it as a subplot. So if at all you're creating those subplots, you should remember them and you should finish them before the end of the story. One final uh, word of advice, uh, last two minutes, that whenever you're writing a story, before writing a story, you should always think that what is the treatment of the story? Whether this story is going to be linear format or non-linear format. I will strongly advise you not to follow the linear format unless you have, have your whole plot lines and whole subplots and other side characters so sorted that you think that you will be able to pull it off through your linear view of story. Linear, linear is, for example, the way it starts right from the beginning of the story and then have a middle and the end. So there are people who are very confident that they'll be able to do this in a linear narration. But these days, what works is a non-linear narrative more than a linear work. People get hooked when they are seeing, then they see the story somewhere in the middle, and then they always go behind and then try to come again in the end. This is the format which is more popular. This is the format which people are reading more or people are watching more. For example, those who know on Netflix, there's a series happening, Money Heist. Money Heist is a fantastic example of non-linear narrative, where you start not in the beginning, somewhere in the middle, and then you go towards the end. So try to crack that part. I mean, I tried to do that in my book, Black Friday, and uh, it worked very well. That was my first book. I was not very good at do doing it at that. So book has so many flaws, which only I am aware that the book is suffering so many, with so many drawbacks. But the non-linear part worked. So what I'm trying to tell you is try to start not in the beginning, but some in the middle. I mean, we all know my favorite writing principle, which those guys who have been watching my videos, they know. I keep saying, lay media raise. In the middle is the beginning. You should always start in the middle. Those guys who have watched Gajini and those guys who have seen so many such other movies, they know that the film or the story which starts in the middle, in the middle is the beginning, always will be able to grab your attention immediately, quickly. Don't you know all those stories where we start, the moment the guy starts saying he start, gets into a story, and people are so besotted, they are so obsessed with the guy and the narration that they cannot leave that. It's only because he started in the middle. So try to have your narrative non-linear. And I think if you manage to hold on to this four or five basic principles, then you're set. Then nothing can stop you from becoming a writer and a good writer with a nice creative imagination. So all the best, guys. I hope I've managed to... Uh, solve your problems and give you enough insights about creative writing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for your enriching session. Um, you. Now uh, we'll be taking up a few questions from the participants. Uh, so the first question that has come is, uh, like so much lockdown literature has taken birth. Why do they have so much negative emotions? Why am I supposed to handle this answer? I thought I'm going to write about creative writing. 
okay sir so next one uh, it is um, if self publishing um, a solution in the is uh, is self publishing a solution in the current pandemic times no please in those guys who are out here to make a mark for themselves i will strongly advise them not to self publish please because i know a very talented writer friend of mine who made the mistake her first book was rejected by penguin actually not rejected penguin wanted to give some suggestions to improve the story line but she was a very stubborn girl she refused to follow those instructions and she went and published her own book so today after writing one book it was kind of you know making a death nail for herself she is not going to get a publisher for herself so she has to keep publishing her own books don't self publish unless you are desperate or unless you think that if you not self publish you will commit suicide so only as a thing to save yourself from suicide self publish otherwise don't okay sir so the, the next question is does the story reflect the character of the writer do we develop our own individual writing techniques i think you should develop your own individual writing technique but that's how you will be remembered in the long run and don't try to become overnight sensation with your first book this might happen slowly uh, people will not read and start recognizing you with your first book you know john grisham john grisham wrote his first book a time to kill now a time to kill was a much better book than his later book the form but when he wrote the form he kind of became famous and then people went back and even read a time to kill so my suggestion here is that keep writing one two three and slowly recognition will come to you so develop a into your style develop a way where people recognize you but it will happen slowly people who are looking for overnight fame might get disappointed okay thank you sir so the next question is please recommend any website for creative writing checking i think you can talk to uh, the spiller college guys they are doing some very fantastic stuff so this college might be having something on creative writing my friend mr rizvi was telling me that they have very nice courses so please go for it thank you sir uh, so the next question is um, after representing the life of popular dons in your multiple books have you ever got any threat from them oh i have answered this question so many times <laughs> i have got so many threats two three four of them but it's okay i mean i'm now used to them it's like a doctor who has been treating covid patients know that there is a possibility he might catch covid but still keep treating the patients so it's like that okay sir uh, and uh, the last question um, like uh, can i take two to three more yeah yeah please yeah okay sir uh, the next question is can uh, multiple conflicts make the reader get away from the story as well no see it's the way you handle the story nicely it's the way see uh as i said it's a craft as i said it's a skill it's like the way you uh, i i mean i will tell you but i speak to my wife the way you cook a food the way you make a recipe so the way the chef managed to design the whole uh, recipe design the a particular dish and after the dish what he does is he starts garnishing it so having some kind of coriander leaves over it and you know putting some other condiments on the plate what you're doing there is trying to improve and make it look better that's what you should do with your story or for example the dresses that you wear so you try to have a tie you have a cap or you do other things so this subplots or this uh, conflicts is actually going to enhance the reading pleasure for your readers so if you can handle it well then do it if you are not confident then you should not but i for one will say that please take chances because those guys who don't take chances with the writing uh, normally don't go anywhere okay thank you sir sir uh, the next question is should there be a limit to the conflicts in the story it all depends see as i said that uh, there are certain writers who take lot of risk while writing a story and they know that even if they take so many conflicts they will be able to resolve all that in the end successfully so if you are confident of pulling it off till the end nicely and uh, coherently then yes you may but if you think that you will lose your readers or the thread will be disrupted somewhere then i think avoid i will leave again to the individual way of writing and the way they take decision and make judgment calls okay uh, sir uh, next question is what should we keep in mind 
when writing for Indian audience? See, Indian audience like two things. Uh, first, they like the location. You can't just say that they have met in a particular cafe and they start having coffee. No, they like location very well. I mean, I get a lot of mail from uh, people in US and European countries, those Indians who you are in, in India in 1980s, 90s, and then they have gone to uh, those places, European capitals and settled there. They write back saying that we love the way you described Mahim area. We were so happy the way you described about Mumra or the Dongri area. So the first thing that I've seen is that the readers love the places. I got some mails from Pakistan and they said that they liked the way in Mumbai Avengers, my heroes were racing through those streets of Karachi and the way I said Korangi Park and I, I did mention all those places. So Shara Faisal, they said we liked very much the way you have described those locations. Or when I went to Dubai and I talked about those places. So location is something which the, the readers identify about. So be good. The, about location A and B, the readers like the time frame when the story is happening. Those time is example the way it's unfolding and what was the historical incident that was happening behind. For example, in this Daud's mentor, where I wrote about the guy uh, Khalid Pelwan who made Daud what he became, I wrote a lot about the government policies about gold and whatever was happening in, in at that time, the seaside and the smuggling location and the dates. So. The era and the location is very important for your readers, even if it's a fiction. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir. So these were the only questions that uh, we had. Um, thank thank, yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, now I would uh, request uh, our vice principal, Professor Deepika Sharma, to please uh, give the vote of thanks. Very good evening to one and all. I take this opportunity to put all my gratitude in the form of words to thank okay. each and every individual who contributed to the success of this event. On behalf of Pillai College of Arts, Commerce and Science, I would like to thank very dynamic and insightful resource person of this webinar, Mr. S. Hussain Zaidi for thank being you. such an eloquent resource person. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir, for giving thank us you. the guidance on principles of creative writing, how to prioritize the writing work, and then uh, to have patience and be creative. We thoroughly enjoyed listening to your lovely experiences as well. Thank and you. loved the comparison, sir, when you said uh, uh, writing is like cooking. You have to just uh, you know put all your ingredients together and garnish. That was a nice one. So it was truly our privilege to have you with us today, sir. Thank you. I would also like to thank our beloved mentors and founders of Mahatma Education Society, Dr. K. M. Vasudevan Pillai and Dr. Daphne Pillai, for always radiating a source of inspiration and encouragement. Sincere thanks to Dr. Daphne Pillai, ma'am, for sparing her valuable time for this webinar. Thanks to Principal Dr. Gajanan Wade for supporting the team always. An event of this dimension where the live streaming is being viewed by thousands of people from India and abroad cannot happen without a strong team. We have been fortunate enough to have an excellent in-house technical team. Thanks, Jay, for this consistent streaming. Thanks to our uh, social media team. Thank you, Suki, for the wide reach of the event. Many congratulations to the department of uh, BAMMC and the entire organizing committee for the flawless conduct of this event. Last but not the least, thanks to all the participants without whom this event would not have been possible. Thank you so much for being such a fantastic participants. I'm sure all of us will be leaving this platform with lots of takeaways. We will be happy if these things will help you in uplifting your career. Once again, thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. Uh, Thank I you. request all the participants to please fill up with the feedback forms. 
the link has been shared in the in in the box um uh, the link will be active uh, will be active for only 20 minutes so kindly fill it and avail your e-certificates, please. Thank you so much for Can being a webinar. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, sir.